Notre Dame is number one. Notre Dame with a miracle win is a He's clock going clock. again. Notre Dame is scored. Oh, just a great college football game, great win. So proud of my football team and the way they overcame uh, adversity. Uh, we hadn't been in that position at all this year. I told them at halftime, I said, listen, what did you think? We were going to go the whole year and not trail and be ahead the whole year? You don't do that in college football at any level. And I said, stick with the plan. Here's what's going on out there. Uh, continue to play. And look, we found a way to run the football late again which uh, tells me a lot about our physical uh, preparation, uh, that, we're, that, that we're clearly uh, a football team that can match physically with Stanford, and then obviously uh, a great goal line stand where physically we control the line of scrimmage. So um, again, very good opponent in Stanford, um, but today uh, Notre Dame was better, uh, and um, really proud of the way our kids fought and, and persevered. Coach? Two, they have two plays inside the one yard line. I mean, even with your defense and what they've done, I mean, are you really expecting them to make those two stops? You know, I think, you know, again, as you know, we didn't give up a touchdown uh, to, to, you know, a team. We gave it up, obviously, on offense. Uh, no, I, I think you think something's going to happen. You know what I mean? You're going to get a tackle for a loss. The ball is going to come out. Um, but I was not starting to look at my play sheet for calls. Um, where I've done that at other times in my career where you're, you're in overtime, you're going, okay, this one's going to another one. I, I was focused on uh, the calls that were being made defensively that we were going to find a way to, to keep them out of the end zone. Brian, um, can you talk about what happened to Golson that knocked him out of the game and then Reese's performance? Yeah, blow there? to the head. Um, and and um, he, his vision was blurred, and uh, he, he wanted to get back in there, and uh, our medical personnel would not clear him. Given the, given the history of the series where they've kind of pushed you around by your own words, mm -hmm. was there something kind of satisfying that they came right at you at the end of the game? There's no question. There's no – I mean, look, when, when you're talking to your team all week about uh, a, a heavyweight match and you can't keep taking body blows, you've got to stand in there. And sooner or later, you, you've got to be the one that delivers. That was a – you know – it, it comes to fruition in the way the game ended and our team coming up with a great goal line stand. Classic. Brian. Goal line stand. Right. I mean, just given, again, all that, given what Stanford had done and given how good they are, maybe the best team you've seen this year, is this, is this a cr corner turning moment for you guys this year in a way? Group has a lot of confidence. They, they have a confidence now. They haven't been on the other end of it where they have to come back and win a football game. So there's a high level of confidence that our football team now can carry on, you know, to the next game and the next game. You know, we're halfway through the season and uh, six weeks left with this group. I think they, they leave here knowing uh, that they can win uh, if they stick with the plan. Just, I know Everett kind of went out this time for a medical issue, but I mean, the way this quarterback thing has kind of been working out for you this year, I mean, uh, as much as you're comfortable with it, you kind of just even wonder <laughs> yourself how. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just letting it happen. You know, I, what I was really proud of, and, and, and I, I hope you'll take notice of this, uh, Everett hit a point there where, you know, his, his dauber was down a little bit. His, his confidence was a bit shaken, and he came back with a great drive and did some really good things. I was really proud of the way he overcame a, a little bit of adversity during the game. Whereas when he had had that situation against um, Michigan, you know, we really had to move in another direction. He fought through that. He made a big step today. He made some plays. He helped us win uh, this football game. Brian, were you surprised that they tried you twice right up the middle at the end? No, I mean that's <laughs> that's what Stanford does. They they, they uh, look. They ran an inside power play all the way down to the three yard line. Uh, so uh, I don't think you can fault them for doing what they do. I mean that's their offense. I mean if they're a spread offense and a team that doesn't run between the tackles, then you would be surprised. But you know we were loaded up um, and uh, just controlled the line of scrimmage in those situations. And, and I think Lewis went out on second down. And can you talk about the importance of him being in there? on those last two plays. Yeah, he's, he's one of the 11 guys. Uh, if Lewis Licks is out there by himself, they score. But certainly to have a 300-pounder in there, he's, he's a guy that we, we think is a very good player. We wanted to get him back on the field, that's for sure.
Coach Tyler probably made the uh, your biggest offensive play of the season to date. Was that a let's find Tyler at some point? Part well, of? it was tough. You know, he had double coverage on the backside, and it was all one on one on the front side. We just didn't do a good enough job of taking advantage of it. Tommy did a nice job a little bit later, um, and, and finding uh, that touchdown in overtime was a was a was a nice check. But yeah, we had to get the ball to him, and, and maybe we forced it a couple of times. But the kid came up with some great plays. And on the last stop, did, did the refs blow the whistle? Did it seem, it seemed like everybody jumped up and started celebrating while he went there? It's, it was pretty apparent to me that the play was over. Um, so I, I think that that's what everybody saw, is that the play was over. And, uh, you know, because, again, we're, we're, um, you know, we're focused on making sure that progress has been stopped and uh, it seemed, seemed to have been validated. Ryan, can you talk about the third quarter, momentum change? You didn't score. But you dominated. What 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 happened there? Do you think? Again, I, I think our physical conditioning. We're we're a team that that just keeps coming after you. And and if we stayed with the run, we kept trying to find ways against the seven man box, loaded box. We didn't throw the ball well enough again. And that's still our Achilles heel. We have to throw the football better. But having said that, we found ways to to move the football, uh, running it in a very difficult look. It seemed like in the fourth quarter, Everett didn't make up big plays right before he got hurt that he did get the ball going. Did you see something there that he was you know, hitting things he hadn't hit before? Yeah, he, he started to feel more comfortable with the rush. Uh, he was, you know, obviously he's learning about a pressure situation where they're bringing just four down where you have to slide in the pocket. So these are all, I was really proud of him today. He, he grew up. I know it, it wasn't as clean. The numbers you can, can analyze them and say, well, he didn't play well. All I can tell you is in his growth, he did some things for me as the head coach that allow us to keep progressing with Everett. And Coach Shaw said that on the third and one play before the field goal, that his players, the Farley um, sack. Mm. Uh, oh, that, okay, that the, the he, TFL. That, that there was a, um, a whistle his players heard and they stopped. I, I didn't hear a whistle. Were you aware of him complaining about that? or they? No, I was not aware. This is the first I've heard of it. Um, is, is there a possible problem here? Because I think Michigan, the, the refs ruled that there was uh, a play, a whistle in the, in the stands. I, look, I, I will tell you that I've been in a lot of stadiums, and very rarely do, I, do you hear a whistle. I hear my name a lot, but I don't hear uh, <laughs> usually. I <laughs> uh, usually don't hear a whistle, so I, I don't know where that came from. Coach. Uh, what did you tell Tommy when, when he went and had to go, get in the game so Get quickly? your helmet. Let's go. He couldn't find his darn helmet. So uh, just get in his helmet. I told him, listen, here's what you have to manage. We're going to give you a run play, and you're going to have to get us in the right play, and we'll keep it really simple. We had three or four plays. You manage the rest. And he essentially, you saw him out there, he got us into the right play. He managed the game very well. Then with the third and long and overtime, the yeah. pass to Theo. I mean, what happened on that play and what was cover zero? Uh, we knew that we were going to get pressure from the field. They actually went zero and brought the safety across. They hadn't done that, so they came free. Tommy knew he had a one-on-one -on -one matchup, a very good one, and it's a practice thing. Where in practice, we say, "Listen, just get some air to it." You got a really, I got a wide receiver coming out of the backfield. There's going to be a favorable matchup. Put it up there and and let's let's give it a shot. Did a nice job. Brian, on, uh, after Everett's fumble in the end zone, Tommy's up throwing on the sideline. Were you giving any serious consideration at that point? To no, he, he was banged up a little bit. And so, no, I was not thinking about taking him out of the game. He held on to the ball too long, clearly, uh, but it was only a three-man rush, too. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, um, yeah, I'd like him to get the ball out of his hands in the end zone. Um, but no, he, he got banged up a little bit on the sack. We just wanted to make sure uh, he was going to be OK. He was cleared. He was fine. He said to me that he was fine, so we put him back in. And, and then, that's when he responded. It started to interrupt. That's when he responded after that, what was a huge play. He responded and, and gave us a nice drive the next series. And then just Matthias, just for, for a young guy, obviously, still new at the position and, and, and a new challenge for him today. Yeah. Let's talk about him a little Yeah, bit. absolutely. We had to drop him down uh, a number of times because of the formation looks. He can't play deep. You start playing two shell against that look, uh, we ran into some problems. They hit us a couple of times when we were in our bracket coverage where we had to bring him down. So he had to be closer to the ball. He made some plays. And um, you know, Kaveri made some plays out there as well. So both of them played very well for us. It seems your front seven 
gets almost the lion's share of credit for everything on defense. The secondary today, I mean, did it take it up to a level uh, going up against Yeah, them? I mean, th they made some great contested catches. Uh, I mean, they had two consecutive plays where the ball was thrown in a position away from the defender where we couldn't. We were on body. We were on body on those throws. They made some really good plays. Outside of that, no double moves over the top, which is what they do. Um, we kept the big plays away from the secondary again. And, and if we can continue to do that, um, w as you see, we're, we're pretty difficult to, to go against defensively. When you kicked the tying field goal to put it into regulation, you had a third and two, I believe, at the five or so. Yeah, we did. Were you, like, almost content to go into overtime? Or? You know, we, thought, we talked about it. No, I wasn't content. We wanted to score. But we talked about uh, going to a run-pass check and you know what? Power's been our bread and butter. You know, that's what we've done. When the game's been on the line, we've run power and we've closed out games. We closed out the Michigan game running the same play. So we went back to it. We went to the left side um, and they were better on that play. So, um, no, we wanted to pick up the first down. We thought power could do it. And then just on their touchdown in the end zone, the fumble, usually this year your nature has been to protect the defense and just punt it away, let them play. I think he's if I had a chance, I'd call. I'd take that one back. Mm -hmm. If I had to do it all over again, I would have taken that one back. Brian down the middle, uh, just with TJ's catch. Just how good of an adjustment did he make on that ball? Because it was thrown a little behind him, and just well, it was thrown without much air on it either. You know, he made a great job. See, TJ's a very skilled player this year in terms of he has focused on his craft. So he came out of his break, came back six yards for the ball. Um, great receivers do that. They come back and get the football. They don't stand waiting for it. And, and that's been his progression. Um, he's progressed uh, in the skill end of that position and his route running. And that, that was evident in that particular play. And just with the defense, do you guys even talk about it all the 16 quarters without a touchdown? Is that something that you guys are cognizant of? We don't talk about it, but certainly it's, it's a source of pride. They hear about it. They talk about it amongst themselves. It's not something that we stand up and talk about other than when we go over our goals on Monday and we'll go over them again and talk about what we're doing defensively. But um, just, uh, again, we game ball went to our defense. Uh, how, how do you not give the defense the game ball after the way that game was played? We all hear how hard you try to stop the noise, but how difficult is it now for, for your team, especially, not to think that they're a team of destiny? <laughs> I, I don't know that uh, – I think they know that they're a good football team more than anything else. I think they feel like they've, they earned the win today. They, they came from behind, right? They didn't luck into it. They won in overtime. I think if they lucked into it, you know, maybe a fumble on the goal line or something happened, maybe you could make that case. But they won that game. They earned that win. And so I think I would rather have them believe that each and every week, if they prepare, that they can beat any opponent. I guess maybe the better question is, do, are you worrying less and less as you continue to win each week that you don't have to keep pushing that message? No, to <laughs> absolutely not. No. No, it's uh, they're 18 to 21 year olds. Uh, you know, uh, this will be a consistent. Um, we will over communicate the message beginning on Monday. Thank you. What's the really on the helm to helm to hit the penalty that kept uh, that drive on, on Everett um, in the way you understood it? Because it didn't look like it, it was intentional. It just looked like one a, a tackle. But obviously, it was it was helmet to helmet clearly. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, you know, it's administered as helmet-to-helmet um, -helmet contact in a tackling form. So if there's a tackle involved and it's helmet-to-helmet -helmet and it's actually seen, it's supposed to be called. A lot of times, as you know, when those things come together and there's two or three guys closing, sometimes you can't see it. But actually the rule, as I know it, is helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact on a tackle is a foul. Uh, you know, but other than that, I, I think you, what you're talking about is – strict interpretation of, of the rule that they followed. Seems like we ask this every other week, but just with Tommy coming in again, leading a game time and game winning drive, where do you, where's that come from? I mean, the mental toughness, if you will, in those conditions. I, I mean, I, I, I'll sound like the same guy who's answered this question 15 times. Um, he manages the offense very well. 
Um, does he have all the tools, the strength of arm, the foot speed? No, he does not. But what he has is a great mind for the game. Uh, he can manage difficult situations. And uh, he comes in and can close games if we need him, if we need him. And he's a, an incredible young man that he can stay so focused in the game, know what's going on during the game. At halftime, I'm talking with him and Everett, and he's pointing out some things about the outside coverages that we should maybe think about running as well. And, and he's just a very smart football player. Thanks, Will. Players in your short list. Yep. Oh!